Hey, Jim Hoffman here from EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about airway assessment when doing CPR. Um, it's important to note uh, that some of the changes in American Heart Association as far as obtaining advanced airway management versus just basic airway management or maybe a secondary uh, airway control device. Um, and of course, we're going to do our quick overview of this assessment. And I just want to kind of go over this because I want to point out just a few things that I think are important to just kind of keep in the front of your mind when you're doing CPR on the patient and you're trying to control that patient's airway. Now, of course, we want to make sure the patient that the airway is going to be patent. We want to wonder and try to consider whether or not we might need to use an advanced airway and if it's indicated for the patient you're coming in contact with. And we want to make sure that the placement of any device that we use, whether it's an OPA uh, or a endotracheal tube, that it is uh, placed properly and we want to be able to be able to confirm that placement, especially when we talk about advanced airway management. And we want to also ensure that the tube and when using advanced airway management that it's secured and we want to go ahead and make sure we reconfirm that tube placement uh, frequently when we're doing uh, our patient care. So some of the things you want to think about is appropriate actions for using uh, airway control and of course the basic ones of course are our unconscious patients are always our head tilt chin lift or maybe an oropharyngeal airway or maybe a nasopharyngeal airway, an NPA uh, on patients, we might want to, again, think about those advanced airway management if we need it as well. Things like an LMA or a laryngeal mask airway, maybe an esophageal tracheal tube, things like a combi tube or a king airway, or of course the endotracheal tube, the endotracheal tube intubation. Um, you know, we have to weigh the benefits of advanced airway management in the field uh, against things like adverse effects like interrupting chest compressions, which American Heart Association now really stresses the continuous chest compressions when we're doing CPR and minimizing those interruptions in chest compressions. Um, you know, we want to minimize them uh, and we want to avoid that as excessive ventilation with these patients, okay? Um, you know, the healthcare providers out there, you know, you, you might wind up thinking about maybe waiting, holding off on inserting an advanced airway uh, until the patient at least doesn't respond to your initial rounds of CPR, your initial rounds of defibrillation, or until even spontaneous circulation returns. So advanced airway devices, like I mentioned, like the LMA or the combi tubes or a king tube, uh, those things actually can be placed while uh, compressions are being done. Uh, so when you're inserting these uh, advanced airway devices, uh, Make sure you do your proper CPR and your ventilation. Um, 30 to 2 uh, compression ventilation ratios. Um, and you want to try to uh, um, uh, do your ventilation. You don't want to over-ventilate the patient, okay? Um, you want to make sure you go ahead and, and try to ventilate them 10 to 12 breaths a minute, okay? So that ends up being about, uh, you know, 5 to 6 seconds in between your ventilations. So if you try doing that, I think you might find that it seems a little bit long, but you're aiming for that 10 to 12 ventilations um, uh, per minute uh, on the patient. So remember 30 to two if you don't have an advanced airway in place. Now once you get that advanced airway in place, you want to go ahead and you want to confirm the placement of the into, of the tube. And a lot of times you're going to do your physical examination, which is your lung sound, chest rise, uh, patient skin color, things like that. And you want to definitely make sure you do your end tidal CO2 uh, when you're looking at your capnography. You want to make sure that you're going ahead and doing that, okay? Um, you want to be, make sure that you know you're getting that that good measurement on your end tidal CO2. And what you want to do is if you see that the reading on your end tidal CO2 is less than 10 
uh, you want to try to improve your CPR quality to try to get that uh, measurement a little higher than that okay um, so you know these are things you want to think about when you're doing it and and also securing the device okay make sure that you secure the the advanced AV device properly make sure that it it's secured to the patient so that when you're moving the patient you're doing CPR uh, you're manipulating things that are going on with the patient especially in the field all the moving around that we do with the patient and the adjusting and things like that that the that the airway device, the advanced airway device, does not become dislodged. Make sure that you secure it. And of course, you want to make sure that you reassess the patient. Always continually reassess your breath sounds, reassess your chest rise, reassess the patient's skin color, reassess the end tidal CO2, and make sure that the tube doesn't get dislodged, that it doesn't uh, shift, maybe go a little bit deeper into the right main stem of the lung, and then kind of give you different readings and your entitled and different results and what you're seeing going on with the patient. So that's pretty much it for this Monday Minutes, guys. I know real brief, but I think what I, I'm hoping that you're going to just try to keep this in the front of your mind, not jump right to that advanced AWI device when you get on a CPR call, a cardiac arrest call, that you'll go ahead, use your basic devices for a little bit first, at least, again, the first round of CPR, your first round of, of defibrillation before you start considering using advanced AWI devices. Uh, get that good quality CPR in there first. Make sure you, of course, ventilating the patient. There are even things out there where they're not even ventilating the patients. So they just put them on an RE breather. Of course, follow your local protocols and what your medical director advises. Um, but this is what we're trying to say is that the airway is becoming less important when we're talking about uh, CPR in patients, focusing more on those good quality chest compressions. So do that first before you start considering those advanced airway management techniques and when you do consider those advanced airway management te techniques make sure it coincides with your physical exam it coincides with your reassessment and your end title co2 until next week of course this is jim hoffman from ems office hours as always stay safe <laughs>